Parker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Attorney General. Does the government intend to pass the Marine and Coastal Area Takutai Moana Bill? Sorry. Does the government intend that the Marine and Coastal Area Takatai Moana Bill be passed without amendment? The Honourable Chris Mr. Mr. Speaker, whether the bill is passed without uh, amendment will be uh, determined by the House, not the Minister. Well, they'll be very interested to know whether Labor is going to be moving any amendments. And the Honourable David Parker. Why did the government use its voting muscle to report the bill back early without any amendment and without even a half-hearted attempt to consider the submissions of the more than 4,500 New Zealanders who went to the trouble to submit. Order, and order, order. I just uh, forgive my interrupting the honourable member, but he should give some thought to the fact that the minister is not responsible for the actions of a select committee. The select committee makes its decisions, and and the minister, the minister can't be questioned about those decisions of the select committee. I, I invite the member to reword his question. In, in, David, in fact, sir, I hadn't finished it. Why, why did the government use its voting muscle to report the bill back early without amendment and without even a half-hearted attempt to properly consider more than 4,500 New Zealanders' submissions, nor a 500-page departmental report that committee members had not even read? And was it because he had instructed them to do so? Order. Clearly the member didn't listen to my uh, caution. Order. The member didn't listen to what I said before. The minister has no responsibility for the behaviour of the select committee. If uh, the minister, the member wants to ask the minister whether he gave the select committee any instructions, that, that, but we didn't need all the, the rest of that. And so I invite the member again, but this will be the last occasion to repeat his question to get it in order. Honourable David Parker. Uh, did the uh, Attorney General, uh, the Prime Minister or any other member of the Cabinet tell the members of the select committee to report it back pronto? The Honourable Chris Minnison. No one tells Mr Henare what to do. He is, he is the chair of the select committee. The reality of the matter is this. The areas of dispute between the parties on this issue have been very clear from the time that Labor announced its fifth position on the bill. And what is in the public interest now is that we debate those issues of principle. The Honourable David Parker. Why did the attorney refuse to release to the Maori Affairs Select Committee the legal advice the government had received about the effect of the new threshold test for establishment of a customary marine title? Was it, would it, was it because it would show he's been saying one thing to the Maori Party and other things to other, the rest of New Zealand? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. No, the position is this, and the member knows it from his own time as Attorney General, that issues of waiver of privilege are for the Attorney General to determine. The committee had the opportunity to obtain uh, legal advice, and I understand, I understand that Mr Parker declined it. Well, I don't know how Mr Mallard would know. He wasn't a member. Uh, and uh, the committee had the opportunity and didn't do so. Tēnāko, Mr Speaker, kia ora tato to the Attorney General. What is the significance of the burden of proof clause in the Marine and Coastal Area Tagutai Moana Bill uh, where the Crown is required to prove that extinguishment of customary title had not occurred? And what feedback has, he, uh, has there been from Iwi about this issue? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Clause 105 is a very important issue. It picks up what the Court of Appeal uh, said in the Ngāti Apa case, uh, that the burden of extinguishment lies on the person or body that seeks to have it distinguished, in this case the Crown, and so the Crown has the burden of extinguishment, uh, and the advice that I've received from Iwi is that is, it is a just and proper thing to do. The Honourable David Parker. Uh, did the Attorney General or the Prime Minister or any other Minister of the Government instruct Government members to block the Select Committee obtaining its own legal advice as to the effect of the change to the threshold test for a customary marine title? And was it because the Maori Party is about to implode or they just want to whack this through so people will forget about it before election? The Honourable Chris Henderson. Oh. The second part of the question is ridiculous. The Māori Party is not going to implode. They have been very staunch, 
colleagues of this government in dealing with treaty settlements, which is why our record is so much better than theirs. And we have been working very well together on these important issues, issues that need to be addressed, where every party in this parliament acknowledges that the 2004 legislation is a flop and we need a better model. Tom Biscowan. Thank you, thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Attorney-General. What evidence has he been able to show the Prime Minister of widespread public support for the Marine and Coastal Bill, given that the Prime Minister said in March last year that if there was not widespread support for the proposed law, the current law would remain in place? The Hon. Chris Finlayson. Well, every party, every party in this Parliament recognises that the 2004 legislation has not worked and has to be repealed. The issues of principle, the issues of principle are how we go about constructing a replacement. Every party's position in this Parliament is pretty clear on that, that issue, so let's have the debate. John, a point of order, John Biscard. Uh, Mr Speaker, my, uh, my question was very specific. I asked the Attorney-General to, as to what evidence he had been able to show the Prime Minister of widespread public support. He mentioned nothing about the evidence he's been able to show the Prime Minister of widespread public support for this bill. I'd ask the Attorney-General to answer the question. The, I mean, the, 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 no, I accept the Minister didn't answer exactly what the member was asking, but he did explain why the government is proceeding with it, uh, which uh, appeared to be a little different from previous information provided. But, uh, I mean, the member has a further supplementary question. If he wasn't particularly satisfied with that answer, he can delve further. John Biscard, point of order. Point Mr. Of order. Mr. Speaker, point of order. Yes, the party does have a further supplementary, but we're still entitled to have out the supplementaries do ask answered. And what you said in your response to me was that the attorney didn't answer the question exactly. With respect, Mr Speaker, he didn't actually answer the question at all. Well, order, he was specific. Order, what, I'll, order, what I'll do is I'll invite the member to repeat his question. If the member is contesting my ruling, which I accept, it had better be a very precise question. John Biscarn to repeat his supplementary question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Attorney-General, what evidence has he been able to show the Prime Minister of widespread public support for the Marine and Coastal Area Bill? given that the Prime Minister said in March last year that if there was not wide, wide support for the current bill, sorry, for the widespread support for the proposed bill, the current law would remain in place. The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Well, as I said in the answer to the question the last time he asked it, I referred to the position of political parties who are representatives of the public in this place. I can also refer to the evidence that came from the very long conversation that we've had on this issue since November 2008 about widespread dissatisfaction uh, with the 2004 legislation uh, and the desirability of having, a, uh, having legislation which restores the right of access to justice to this uh, to, to Maori. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Given uh, supplementary to the attorney, given that customary title holders will have an absolute right of veto on any development proposed under the Resource Management Act, what confidence can the people of New Zealand have that they won't be held to ransom? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Iwi who obtain, or any applicant group that obtains customary title, is going to have certain rights in accordance with what you'd expect of a property holder or a, someone who holds a, cust a, a, a title. Uh, and that is a perfectly reasonable result when one bears in mind that we are dealing with respect for property rights. People are not going to be held for ransom. I have said on many occasions that there is a guarantee of public access uh, to the foreshore and seabed. I think the member has, stopped, has to stop tilting at windmills and look at reality. Because the minister added that last bit, I invite the Minister to answer the part of the question about the Resource Management Act. 
well, I've said about the Resource Management Act that any uh, development, for example, will have to be done in accordance with the provisions of the Resource Management Act. Uh, so EWI will have to comply with it, and any would-be developer would have to comply with it. That hardly seems an unreasonable proposition. Quest Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, how can the attorney deny that his government's abysmal practice has prevented this parliament from having any meaningful advice about the effect of the change to the crucial threshold test for establishment of a customary marine title, and why shouldn't Parliament and the 4,500 insulted submitters be critical of this? Oh, Chris well, as I understand it, the, the, Mr Parker declined extensive detailed briefings on the law. The committee decided albeit by a majority, not to have uh, an independent uh, legal assessment. And now he's unhappy uh, that Crown law advice was not provided to him because I declined to waive, because I declined to waive privilege, uh, and he's seeking advice which simply doesn't exist. Quest question number nine. Oh, beg your pardon, total off level. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you. To the Attorney-General, uh, has he heard the comments from historian Professor Paul Moon that, quote, the latest stoush around the bill is nothing more than politicking, suggesting that all parties are now trying to do whatever they can to look for any excuse to gain some traction. And what weight has he placed on Professor Moon's conclusion that, quote, what is more important is how the bill will actually operate once it's passed into law? The Honourable Chris Mr Speaker, ultimately questions of who's entitled to customary title are going to be determined by applications to the court. But I agree with Professor Moon uh, that now is the time to have a principled debate on, for example, the Labour Party's position versus the government's position. The Labour Party say have no test, simply send the matter back to court. The National Party and Dr Cullen say statutory codification is necessary. Dr Cullen said that when that was their first position uh, on, on reform. Of course, they've had five since then. Question number nine, Todd McClay. 